Recently, I once more found myself crossing over Balkan territory, but from another angle. I was on a trip on foot and by public transport from Vienna to Zagreb. In one week's time, I was to experience some fine places in Central Europe and some of rural Croatia as well. It was after walking across the border from Slovenia to Croatia that I was quickly reminded that indeed I had entered the Balkans. In a small settlement on the border, I found the only bus stop. There was a man sitting there. I asked him, in my best sure about creation, whether there was a bus to the city of Karlovac. The man did not know and directed me to a cafe across the road. To make my way to Karlovac, I first tried hitchhiking. About a hundred cars passed, but none stopped. It was pouring rain. This being a border town, I could understand why people would be skeptical to take a hitchhiker. You never know who gets into your car. And despite some hitchhiking being a good option across the Balkans, my blonde hair was not doing the trick, and something with the mood was off as well. It was just not a day to hitchhike. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it is not. So I walked into the cafe. A tractor outside had a loud radio playing, because apparently in the cafe itself there was none. I asked the man if there would be, again, a bus to Karlovac. With a subtle laugh, I was informed there was none. I would have loved to join the guys for a beer, but I stopped drinking two years ago and also had to start making a plan for the night. Since I travel without plans or hotel bookings, basically just flights, I run on full improv. That means I better start making a plan by four in the afternoon so I have a couple of hours left before sunset to find a place to sleep. I always do manage. The thing is, it's just about experience and knowing your way around Europe. And speaking a bit of the language, of course. As I had already concluded, my first plans were not going to work out. I thought of something else. From the small village of Bubniatsi, I would be able to take a bus to Karlovac in a few hours, as I saw online. So I looked on Street View to see how the road to Bubniatsi was. No footpath whatsoever. There were some trails through the fields and I would have done the 6 kilometers easily if the fields were not a pool of mud, as undoubtedly they were at that point. So sometimes I let the ship sail and just go with the flow. I walked into the nearest restaurant and ordered a nice large mixed grill as one does. All said and done, I was waiting for the meal to be served. And I walked up to the bar and asked the waiter whether there was any taxi service to Karlovac or Bobinazzi. It was at this point I got another stark reminder that I was in Balkan territory. Because the Balkan man was appointed to assist. I took the leap into the unknown by walking to the restaurant. Because by having my meal in an hour and a half it would be too late to still walk through the fields to the bus station and it would be too dark to hitchhike. So I took my choice deliberately and surrendered control to the Balkan man. Not because I was reckless, but because I knew I needed to and I knew the issue at hand would be solved. The waiter, with a charismatic jawline and just the look of having lived through many things, called upon one of the guys on another table. They were silently playing cards. The waiter addressed one man in the corner and said, You'll bring this chap to Bubniatsi, right? A nut was all it took. Not a word was spoken. I saw the nut and knew I was safe for the night, because the nut means more than a hundred words. When the nut comes from the right person at least, the Balkan man. Now I hinted upon the Balkan man several times, not to objectify or generalize. These are all unique people, but they have a culture in common, and aspects of which I deeply admire. The Balkan man, or plural men, are in my view all men above 50 found anywhere outside the major cities. Adapted verses of them are found everywhere, but the type you can trust with these types of issues without any suspicion are found in places where no tourists visit, such as the wider province of Karlovac in central Croatia. The Balkan man of this story was a sturdy man dressed in black, with a black cap. What added to my feeling of things being in the right hands is that he was wearing a pair of glasses on the tip of his nose. Looking up from his deck of cards, he gave me a quick glance and then gave the nut, 
when he had already looked back down. I said that I'd have no problem to pay for the ride just in case. No word. So I had my meal, a drink, then a coffee. A meal of adventure is how I call those meals. This is a meal where you are on a trip and unsure of where you will end up. Keep in mind I had no hotel yet and even if the man were to drive me to the bus, I'd need to be sure the bus actually came. That would be by 9 in the evening, already dark, in the rain and with no hotels and guest houses in the vicinity. In fact, I'd be more isolated than in the village I was having a meal in. From a remote village to Karlovac, just a few times a day, this bus replaces trains at once run. And as long as I was not on that bus in the direction of Karlovac, there'd be no reason to even think about hotels yet. My meal and coffee tasted great. Let's not forget the Balkan women here, as the waitress was lovely and showed great interest in where I was from and how I ended up here. But I kept paying attention to the Balkan man across from me. Would a man maybe forget about me, or in the end refuse to take me? Would he start drinking, rendering him unable, or a risk of driving? None of those fears turned out to be the case, because the man who would drive me eventually won the last round of cards. And he let us all know. Because he decided to call it quits and slam the table with his fist. Rachun, he called, asking for the bill. It came rather quickly. He then went to take a leak, and when he got back, I was already standing up with my backpack. I had paid my bill in advance. The man came up to me and gave me a wide smile. Suddenly we were on the road, and he turned out to be a fine man, having won his game of cards. He was an avid chatter after the game. He said he was now retired but still working, in the business of renovating clocks. Clocks in church towers, to be precise. And is in Central Europe the perfect place for such a business? We drove to Bubniazzi, the rain still pouring. It was a friendly chat. The man was complimenting my language skills and we had no issue to understand each other whatsoever. But then it was back to business, as I was dropped off at the abandoned train station. Just before 8 in the evening. The man turned serious again and dropped me off, saying I'd need to wait there on my own for about an hour before the bus came. He had a place to go, his home, and we went on our way, as men do. I asked if I could compensate for the fuel, but as per Balkan tradition, that was kindly refused. The man drove off and I walked around the station. The building slowly crumbling apart, a lady peeking around the corner, apparently inhabiting a building right attached to the station. Tall grass grew through the railways. How was I to proceed? I found the timetable of the replacement bus service. Indeed, it would leave by nine, just 50 minutes to go. There was a sort of bus stop, luckily. It was dry but cold. If the bus would not turn up, I'd have a problem. So I waited, getting more chilly by the minute. I walked around a bit, covered by my umbrella. The hour approached, and as if running on clockwork, the next Balkan man came to my rescue. A large bus appeared, backed onto the station platform, and outside came a man of normal posture, a neat tucked in shirt with short sleeves, black jeans and black leather shoes. A bus driver you'd be confident in, as by his grey hair he showed it was not his first time riding this large bus. We shook hands and he quickly understood I was not from there. We managed to speak just fine as I was already invited into the bus some 10 minutes before the scheduled departure time. He was quite surprised I travelled the region this way and all on my own, but he admired it and offered me some gum for the ride. As we waited 5 more minutes he listened to the radio. Scandals of corruption, the ongoing wars, all negative news. I saw he'd heard such news much more often, and I acknowledged that the news is better just ignored nowadays. He said the world is unfortunately the way it is, and all we can do is work and make the best of it. The man surely had seen many changes in his life on the Balkans, but came through unscathed and is stoic in his appearance and thinking. Just another thing I can deeply admire. We pulled out of the station and were slowly driving along the river Kupa on the way south. I'd be the only passenger on the bus the whole way. It was a scenic drive despite it being pitch black. The rain was hitting the windshield and I could only see the lights ahead of me. 
But I knew I was safe with this man, who had a driving career in Germany for over 25 years. And his kids live there now. I could only imagine how tough it is to have kids on the Balkans, having to work abroad yourself without seeing them grow up, come back and then have your kids themselves move abroad. It is a fate many Balkan parents have to tragically surrender to until things improve enough. I never introduced myself to the Balkan men on this day. I know I should have, but it was not intuitive at the time. Neither for them. Although clearly we were enjoying the moment and the company, we all knew we were just passing by, unlikely to ever meet again. But these little crossroads where you meet kind strangers and leave the interaction feeling good are one of the best things about traveling. I do always get the feeling when I travel solo through the Balkans that I am seen as a long lost son. And so I deeply get the feeling that the Balkan men want their own kids to be able to live this way, to explore just with a partner perhaps, and have a feeling of belonging and being safely taken home. And for the lack of kids being close by, each person of a resembling age is treated with utmost care and a deep feeling of warmth and welcome. It makes traveling through the Balkans a true joy. By now I'd call the hotel and I'd be expected before midnight. The bus driver knew the hotel despite it being a small guest house and was eventually so kind to drop me off right in front of it. There was no bus stop but the road was empty. Even when getting on the bus I asked him how I could buy a ticket. There was no need, he said. Then, when getting off, I wanted to at least give him a little tip for his kind gesture. I attempted to give him five euros, but the man refused to take them. We shook hands, waved goodbye, assuming we'd never meet again, although both feeling just quite content with life in that moment. I checked into the hotel. The lovely receptionist offered me some chill drinks from my room. I drank them and took a hot shower. It was still raining and I slept deep and sound. The next morning it was suddenly boiling hot again. The guest house did not offer breakfast and I had no idea what to do that day. But because I still had time left on my itinerary, I decided to book an extra night. 25 euros a night is a steal in Europe nowadays, especially for a large room with a double bed. And so I had my first coffee on an empty stomach and walked into the village, crossing the river Kupa and eventually finding a small store half an hour later. It was there I got my breakfast, a soft croissant, a yogurt drink and a chocolate bar. I had those in the field, uh, quite close to the store. I'd already checked there'd be no bus to Karlovac until 11, so I had all the time in the world to have my breakfast and then some more coffee before heading out to explore the city nearby. A cafe was found uphill and I just walked straight in. Another Balkan man with white shoulders and a large posture had a black shirt with some logo on it, so I just assumed he worked in the place. Without a doubt, I ordered a coffee with milk in the local language. He and his friend started laughing and said I'd need to order at a bar as he was not actually an employee. I left as well and asked for a coffee from a kind lady behind the bar. And so it was close to 11 and I made my way down to the bus stop. And there came the same man to my rescue to drive me to Karlovac, the driver who dropped me at the hotel just yesterday. He was smiling and happy to see me again. And so was I. So I offered to buy a ticket this time because there were other passengers on the bus. He refused again, so I sat down. Svaki dan malo, he said, a little bit forward each day. He assumed I was already moving on to Zagreb, but I'd been in the village for two nights. I'm sure he was impressed, or interested at least, by the way I traveled. As it does show, respect and understanding when traveling slowly through the region, getting to know the people. We were dropped off at the main station of Karlovac. As I pulled out the map on my phone, I saw it would still be a 20 minute walk to the actual center of town. So the driver offered, as he apparently does more often, to drive us to the center with his personal car. The bus was left at the station and the three of us were dropped off in the center. It would be a couple of hours before I could take the same bus back to the village I was staying in. It was by that moment, as I walked along the town square of Karlovac, that I realized these silent men are the backbone of the societies, doing the menial jobs for a meager salary, 
even after retirement age. They are the quiet but solid steam engines, connecting villages, connecting electricity, building bridges and roads. What are we to do without them? And do we give them enough appreciation for their sacrifices, if any at all? It was a couple of hours and a good lunch later that I again boarded the same bus and was dropped off for free right in front of my hotel again. This time we waved, being sure it was the last time. I was a bit sad to see the bus drive along and pass a band. A route the man would probably do hundreds of times more, as long as he'd be healthy enough. And with little appreciation, perhaps just from me. I took another coffee from the bar lady and drank it in a field of grass as the sun set. I found the Kupa River stunningly beautiful and clean and dipped my feet in before it became dark. The next morning it was Sunday and there was no bus. So I had to get to Karlovac another way. The Uber refused to pick me up. It was probably too far. Again it was hot, but I set out a nice route. Checked out of the hotel and just started walking. I'd already brought another breakfast from the store the previous day. And this time there was no bus, so no bucking man coming to save me and drag me along this by now slowly exhausting itinerary. But the hike was great, across the hills, free vineyards. It was just some 5 kilometers from Karlovac and an hour before the train to Zagreb that I needed to rely on someone again. Still, no Uber picked me up. And by walking the sun without shade it would be an unpleasant and long hike along a main road. So I walked into Café Casablanca, where two men looked at me with wide eyes when I started speaking. And they understood me perfectly, but obviously wondered where I was from. One of them gave me a paper note with three phone numbers of taxi drivers. Just one of them works. I ordered it over the phone myself the best I could, and would come in 15 minutes or so. I was given some tap water and listened to the man talk. They were very friendly to me and fascinated by how I hiked the mountains in this unpopular area. It was strikingly beautiful though. One of the men complained about the local hospital he was visiting. As he sipped his beer, he mentioned he had to wait forever for an ultrasound of his abdominal area. He had brought some red wine for his doctor to speed up the wait, but to no avail. The men were living quiet lives of desperation, aging slowly and no family around, most likely, but still having each other to share beers and good laughs. And I was happy to be in the company of those men even for just a little. The taxi driver appeared on the driveway and I said my goodbyes. The driver, again a man of over 50, took me by an ATM, knew exactly what grill place would be open and dropped me there for a quick bite. I truly wondered what would happen to these remote regions if all men of this age would inevitably retire. Would this all become a ghost land without essential services? Would women take over these roles? As still quite commonly in these areas, they take care of young grandchildren and the household. I loved all of them and want all of them to stay around forever. But I paid my taxi fare and got off. Had my food, which was great again, and made it to the station. There it was, the bus that had whisked me through the fields the previous few days. The driver was nowhere to be found, likely at home, resting until his only right on this Sunday in the late afternoon. I decided to write a paper note for him between the door so he'd find and read it. Thank you for driving me around. You're a superman, a great man, I said, with little heart on it. <laughs>